Jesus is the way, the truth. Jesus is the life of men. There is no other way to be saved. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus. Give your life to Jesus, the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth. Jesus is the life of men. There is no other way to be saved. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus. Give your life to Jesus, love truth. Jesus is the way, the truth. Jesus is the life of men. There is no other way to be saved. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus. Give your life to Jesus, love truth. Jesus is the way, the truth. Jesus is the life of men. I hope that Kelly and Arcadia can hang in there for another week. I feel so guilty. They will be fine. Orkedia is very mature for her age. Have you been to Tokyo before? Yes, my love. I have lived in Japan for many years. Let's Google all the baby stuff we need to buy. I want us to be ready for the arrival of this child. You have experience, but this is my first child. When Orkedia was born, I bought all the things that she needed. Her mother only cared for her until she was two years old. Then I took the child, so I know a lot about child care. Why did your mother only care for her until she was two years old? Didn't she miss her daughter? She had postnatal depression, she wasn't coping well with that. When I broke up with her, she tried to kill the baby, to get back at me. What? She said she would kill the child, if I don't come back to her. I didn't think she meant it but her roommate saw her throw the baby off the bed and screaming. What in the world? Her roommates brought the baby to my mother's house, full of scars and bruises. I've been taking care of her since then. I had to grow up. I'm sorry. I think it's almost time for our flight. Hey. It's so great to be back in Tokyo, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, David, will all your friends fit into our apartment? They probably will but they are all renting different apartments. By the way, Bonnie. Yesterday I saw you wear high heels and a diamond necklace. Yes, David. I'm 5 foot 1, so I need to wear high heels every now and then. By the way, that diamond necklace belonged to my great-grandma, so I wear it sometimes. Bonnie, those items could land you in hell. They are unholy, so they defile you. If you're defiled and your garments have stains, you can't get into heaven. Really? I thought it was just makeup. There are many traps that have both set for people, especially for women, because they are easier to deceive. Hey. Sorry, but it's true. Remember that woman that we listened to on the laptop, in Kenya? Trying to remember, Zipra Mashala. Yeah, her. Well, she has a sister called Rachel. She talks very clearly about holiness for women. I have some of her videos on my laptop. So this is the video that you were talking about? Yeah. I want you to listen to that because people do a lot to share these messages. They'd rather just ignore it and say, oh, I'm, I'm obeying the Lord, I'm not stealing, I'm not lying, I'm not committing uh, fornication or adultery, but they are still worldly, you know, they put on makeup, they wear jewelry, and when you talk about outward holiness, to say Jesus doesn't like all those things of wearing jewelry, makeup, wearing immodest clothing, and all those things then, then make you to look no different from a worldly person, a person who doesn't know the Lord. You know, when you talk about that, then people say, oh, you're being legalistic. 
people say, oh, you're being legalistic, you know, uh, you are trying to bring the Old Testament into the New Testament, which is actually very false, because those very people who again quote verses from the Old Testament to support wearing jewelry, you know, they, they are going to quote all those Old Testament examples and then say that, look, God has nothing against us wearing all these things like jewelry, makeup, and all those things. But then when you tell them that God doesn't like them, then they'll say, oh, you are being Old Testament. But they're quoting the Old Testament to actually justify it. Because the truth is that in the Old Testament, even God-fearing people used to wear all those things. So there's no way that you can say when somebody says, oh, Jesus doesn't like all these things. So there's no way that you can say that then that's bringing the Old Testament into the New. No, it's actually entirely the New Testament. One major justification that people usually have when people want to justify all those things like jewelry, makeup, and things like that, they go to the Old Testament and then they quote Esther. They go and quote Esther. Then they go and quote Rebecca in the book of Genesis to say, oh, Eliezer, when Eliezer went to look for a bride for Isaac, he went and got Rebecca jewelry. He went and got her jewelry when he, he, he put jewelry on her. You know, that's what the Bible says, a nose ring and a bracelet. And so they say, so there's nothing wrong with me wearing all those things. Even now, it means Jesus is okay with that. But, you know, we need to learn to sit down and to learn from the Holy Spirit. Winter is approaching. It's almost Christmas. What's Christmas like for you? I don't know. It's a beautiful holiday. Best time of the year. So, let's start with our Bible study. Heidi said that she'd be at my place at 5. All right, let's start. He wants us to read from Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside and the fools came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. They were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some six tiefold, some two tiefold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. I guess the fruit that we bear lets us know what ground we have fallen on. I need to bear fruit. Me too. Let's help with blankets and food at the children's home. Yes, I think that someone is at the door. Um, this message needs to reach more people. About if all we even knew these things, I urge you to May just Jesus go help us share this and word. seek the Lord God on your own with an open heart that is willing to learn. But, however, it's my responsibility Bonnie, those items for me to share help. about they are these, so they defile these you. things because if you're in 2015, stands, you can't get I even into made a video about this. In 2015, there was a time when I had to share my testimony of hell. And then, because I know it's always, let me tell you, it's always so very offensive. So when I'm sharing my testimony of hell, and then I, I share about how Jesus showed me a Muslim man who was in hell, or I share about how Jesus showed me uh, a woman who was in hell for fornication, you know, people are so comfortable with all those things because those are the things that, that the church has embraced as sin. But the church has ignored that worldliness is a sin as well. So when, when I didn't share that part about outward holiness, Jesus rebuked me. And from then, that was 20, 2015, up to now, 2022, anywhere I share my testimony, I always have to make sure I share even about outward holiness. Because Jesus showed me that people are going to hell for this. When I went back to that church where I didn't share about outward holiness and 
when I went back there and Jesus told me you need to share it today because there's someone who's going to die and they're going to go to hell because they're using the artificial wigs the artificial hair they're using the wigs you know it doesn't matter if it's uh, wigs you braid or you sew in or whatever as long as it's not your hair artificial hair artificial eyelashes artificial nails you are uh, painting with the eyebrow pencil like you remove your eyebrows that Jesus gave you and then you paint with an eyebrow pencil or you use lipstick you use all those things you put foundation uh, or you, you, you use makeup on your face painting your nails anything or anything in that class Jesus hates all those things I can assure you Jesus told me very clearly I know, and I know so many women of God whom, after spending so much time in God's presence, Jesus had to tell them because when you're far away from Jesus, there's no way that you are going to know what he likes and what he doesn't like. But the very moment when you start to draw near, because all those things that you're doing, they are repelling you from the Lord because he hates them. So how can he come so close to you? And so because he wants to bring you into an even deeper intimacy, then he, he begins to tell you to say, I don't like these things that you're putting on your face. I don't like makeup. Jesus hates it. And you know why he hates it? I'm going to explain in detail. You know, the Old Testament, it was a shadow of what was coming. The Old Testament is full of symbols that God was trying to use to show us something. Eliezer mm -hmm. went to go and look for a bride for Isaac and when he found Isaac's bride he adorned her with jewelry to beautify her for her husband that was in the Old Testament but then you come to the New Testament where the Bible says don't adorn yourselves with these things instead beautify yourself with your beautify the inner man because not that God is against beauty but God is against fake beauty He's not against beauty, but he's against fake beauty because he already created you fearfully and wonderfully. Whether you are a man or a woman, God already created you fearfully and wonderfully. And in his eyes, you are already beautiful. In his eyes, you are already handsome. Good evening, ma'am. My name is Mr. Choi. I'll be defending you. I am here to discuss your case with you. Good evening, Mr. Choi. I am glad that we are finally meeting up. My name is Mary Faye. So Miss Faye, where do you want us to discuss the topic? At the park. It's not far from here. Goodness, this case makes me so stressed. As a Christian teacher, I don't want children to lose their faith because of these bogus allegations. Are you Christian? Yes, Mr. Choi. Then you should not be wearing a trouser, since you're a woman. What are you talking about, Mr. Choi? It's this thing about holiness. Women should not wear male clothing, and the trousers was not made for a woman. I think about the time when women were seeking equal treatment with men. They would protest by wearing trousers. Yes, yes I remember my grandmother telling me about that. She said that women were not allowed to vote, and so she and all her female friends wore their husbands' trousers and protested for equal rights. I suppose that women didn't wear trousers before they started protesting for equal rights. Oh goodness. Yeah, my wife never wears a trouser. We were going through newspaper articles for my son's assignment. That's when we found out about how women started wearing male trousers. Can we go through the events that led to the charges? Well, it started a few months ago when I started teaching English. Some student named Henry started asking me out. He would tell all the children left the class before he would make his moves on me. How old is he? He's 17, but freakishly tall. Perhaps the fact that he was taller than me made him feel like I wasn't his superior. How long did this continue? Probably a year. I was about to report it. But I made the mistake of warning him. What did he say when you warned him? He said that nobody would believe me. 
That was that. <clears throat> Tell me about the trousers. Why do you think that women should not wear trousers? I did this when I was studying labor law in America. Wearing trousers was restricted to men due to social customs and laws. What laws? The anti-vagrancy statutes of the 1800s, which were pressed into service to ensure that women would dress in accord with the gender norms of the time. What? Various American cities in the 19th and 20th centuries passed legislation, barring women from wearing trousers. These include an 1863 law passed by San Francisco's Board of Supervisors, criminalizing appearing in public in a dress not belonging to his or her sex. Similar laws were passed in Columbus, Ohio, 1848, Chicago, Illinois, 1851, Houston, Texas, 1864, Orlando, Florida, 1907, and a few other American cities. So why did wearing trousers become so normal for women? The case of my grandma, women wore trousers in defiance of these norms, like the 1850s women rights movement. Female slaves that would run away also wore trousers as a disguise. Apparently some women wore trousers in attempts to evade the gender pay gap. It was not seen as normal for a woman to wear a trouser until the 80s or 90s. I have to fly to Tokyo in two hours' time. Can we meet up when I return to Korea? Yes, of course. And so, he hates when you go and then you, you think that you can enhance your beauty with all these things. But, in the Old Testament, Eliezer represents the Holy Spirit. He, he went, he represents how the Holy Spirit goes to search for a bride for Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Spirit finds the bride of Christ, what does he do? He adorns her to beautify her for her husband. But this time around, he doesn't adorn her with jewelry and all these external things. In the Old Testament, those things were allowed, they were permissible. But the Holy Spirit, now in the New Testament, because now we are the bride of Christ, that's the difference between us and Rebecca. Rebecca lived before Jesus was revealed. And because Jesus was not revealed, there was so much ignorance on what is really pleasing to the Lord. People lived in so much ignorance. That's why you find that in the Old Testament, you find that people were marrying polygamous marriages. But in the New Testament, now Jesus is revealed. Now he is teaching us what is truly pleasing to him. And now he says, no, you cannot divorce your wife. You cannot marry another woman after you have married your wife. Yet in the Old Testament, you find that even men of God had more than one wife. Abraham, he was married to Sarah, but he went to go and have a child with his concubine. Can you do that in the New Testament? No. Because in the Old Testament, all those things, we, people were living in ignorance. They were living in so much ignorance because the Son of God had not yet been revealed. That is the difference. But we cannot continue to walk in that same ignorance because now the Son of God is revealed. Our bridegroom has been revealed. And our bride and, and the Holy Spirit who goes to search out for a bride for the Lord Jesus Christ, when he finds his bride here on the earth, he begins to adorn her with beauty for her husband. And the beauty that he adorns us with is the fruit of the Spirit. That is what makes us to be so attractive to Jesus because we are the bride of Christ. Whether you are a man or you are a woman, you are the bride of Christ. Because the marriage between Jesus and the bride and the the marriage between Jesus and his bride is not a physical marriage, you know, it's it's symbolic of the intimate relationship that we have with him. So whether you are a man or you're a woman, you are the bride of Christ. And when the Holy Spirit finds you and identifies you as his bride, then he begins to adorn you 
the way that Eliezer did for, I for Rebecca in preparation of her meeting Isaac. So that was symbolic. There was something that it meant. And in the New Testament, we do not find that same thing happening. It's the same thing with Esther. People like to quote Esther to say, oh, Esther went through this process. That means I can also go and put makeup on my face. I can go and remove my eyebrows and, and uh, just draw with an eyebrow pencil. I can go and do this and that. You know, I can, I can go and wear all this jewelry. That's the Old Testament. The, the Son of God had not been revealed. People were living in so much ignorance of what is pleasing to him. Even the Bible says in the time of ignorance, God overlooked so many things. There were so many things that were being done in the Old Testament before the Son of God was revealed because people were living in so much ignorance of what is truly pleasing to the Lord. And again, for Esther, it's a symbol of the preparation that the bride of Christ has to undergo to beautify herself for her husband. In the New Testament, to beautify yourself for your husband, Jesus, you have to be separate from the world. You get rid of all those things that sway your heart away from him. You get rid of all that artificial beauty that is so unpleasing to your, to your bridegroom. You get satisfied with how God created you to beautify yourself for your husband the way Esther did in the New Testament. You live in holiness. He's not concerned about you like adorning yourself in all these things. It's not going to make you beautiful to him. He's, it, it's, it's, it's actually going to sway your heart away from him. Be content with how God created you. You're not going to look bad or ugly, you know. Satan has created his own image of beauty. God created you and then said that he has, fear, he has made you fearfully and wonderfully. He created you and then he saw that it was good. It was good enough. But because Satan hates God so much, you know what he did? He went and created a certain fake image, an image of a fake human. You know, like everything about you has to be fake. Your nails are not good enough, put these fake ones. Your eyelashes are not good enough, put these fake ones. Your eyebrows are not good enough, put these fake ones. This color on your lips is not good enough, put this. Your hair is not good enough, here's a wig or a weave or here's artificial hair. And then he conforms you to his image. Yet God created you to his image. But Satan wants you to be in his image. So you're changing from God's image to Satan's image. And it's very, very, very detestful to Jesus. I have to tell you. I used to sell backpack here. I'm glad to be in this place. We could fly to Tokyo on Friday. I booked a flight last night. So that's what you were doing on the laptop. Yeah, that and playing tire tracks. This street racing game. You play video games? No, not really. But my son does, and when he uses my laptop he downloads racing games. Oh, I see. Are they going to be in Angola this December? Yeah, I want to spend Christmas with my son, but his mother insists on coming along. I hope she likes it there. Will they be staying with us? Yeah, I hope you don't mind. Um... Okay. Thanks. I knew you'd understand. Yeah. Can you believe that I've never visited David since he moved to Tokyo? This is probably the first time I'll get to see their place. We should come more regularly then. We should. Did you hear about the war in Israel, in the Gaza Strip? Yeah. Do you have any family there? I don't know. My mom would know. She grew up in Israel. I grew up in America, and my father was European. But I really feel concerned over what is happening. May God save Israel. May God save Israel. Are you finished with filming? Yes, but we might have to do some scenes over. They are releasing the movie in December. I 
and people are going to hell for this. You are being vain. You think the way God created you was not good enough. You want to conform to the world. But Jesus says you need to be separate from the world. One day we were doing prayer and fasting with my sister Zipporah. When we were doing prayer and fasting. And then I remember we started to have this discussion about the same things that the Lord has taught us. You know, because we see so many people like they're still so lost in all these things. Like people are praying and doing all these things, but they're so caught up in these in these things you know and we started to talk about it like do you think jesus is going to make an exception for certain people you know the lord had told us to say you need to warn the people to stop all these things they are unpleasing to me i don't like them i don't like them even i used to do that i used to chemically uh, process my hair to straighten it i used to use wigs i used to use makeup i used to use all these things and the lord told me that i don't like all these things the lord doesn't like them and he doesn't want us to go to hell you know and when we were talking about it with my sister and we started to say oh maybe 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 god is going to you know make an exception for some people because so many people are using these things doesn't mean they're all going to go to hell, you know, and we're like, maybe he's going to make an exception. And you know what happened? That very day, we, we finished prayer and fasting in the evening around 6 p.m. Because we were fasting like from, from morning, like when you wake up to 6 p.m. And that very night, we woke up for midnight prayer. And when we woke up for midnight prayer, we finished midnight prayer with my sister. And when I when I when we went back, like my sister went to sleep, I went to, to bed. But when I just put my head on the pillow, that's when Jesus took me to hell. He took my spirit to hell. Because Jesus was hearing my conversation with my sister during the day when we were saying maybe he's going to make exceptions. And Jesus went to show me a woman whom I knew very well. He went to show me a woman I knew very well who had died just a year ago. And the time when the Lord took my spirits to hell, this was on her first anniversary. This was like just days before her first anniversary, or the first anniversary of her death. And everybody had said this woman has gone to heaven. But when Jesus took my spirit to hell, that is the testimony I shared one of my very first videos was the one entitled Woman of God in Hell for Worldliness. And she was in hell. The Lord showed her to me. She was in hell. She was in a pit, a very deep and narrow pit. Narrow pit. And she was trying to come out. Like she was reaching out to the, to the top of the pit so that she can come out. And she was suffocating because there, 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 there was no oxygen. Because in hell you feel like you can't breathe. In hell you feel like you know, the air is so hot, like the air is so hot, and then you have to breathe it in, but you feel like there is no oxygen, but you cannot die, you know, like you breathe it in, and then you feel like you're suffocating. You feel like you're always trying to suffocate, like you're always almost suffocating. And she was trying to come out of the pit, and when, I, when she lifted up off her hands, that's when I realized it was a woman. And she tried to come out of the pit. Then I realized who she was. I recognized this woman. I knew her very well. This was a woman who used to do prayer and fasting. If she wants something from the Lord, she would do prayer and fasting. She would even preach. She would go and evangelize. She would prophesy. God would show her things like true, true visions. That would be telling the truth, like this is really what God is saying, but she was worldly. She was worldly. She had all the fake nails. She used to wear trousers as a woman. You can check out my video where I titled Why God Hates Pants on a Woman because I explained uh, more on that. She was wearing pants as a woman, she was wearing jewelry, she was using the makeup, painting her face, she was using all that, all that fake hair in her hair and she was dressing immodestly you know like not extremely immodest but still immodest 
and she was in hell. And the Lord told me that this is the very reason this woman is in hell. And when she was trying to come out of the pit, I saw these very short demons. You know, they looked, they looked a bit fat and they looked translucent and, and they, in their hands they carried very, very long spears, like extremely long. They were short, but the spears were long. And right there at the edge of the spear, you know, where, where it's pointed like an arrow, it was a bit curved in like that on both sides. It was curved in so that when they pierce someone, when they pull it, pull it out, then they would pull out with a lot of skin. And I saw them like rushing to where she was and they started to stamp her down back into the pit. They started to tam- stamp her down back into the pit and telling her, you fool, you thought you could deceive God. And the Lord showed me that the reason why they were telling her that was because this woman had prayed on her deathbed. On her deathbed, she had prayed to say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Yet in her life, she had heard about outward holiness, but she ignored it. And the, and the excuse that she had was that Rebecca used it and that Esther used it. She didn't understand, you know, she, she felt to, to go to the Lord and read his word. Like, what does his word say in the, in the New Testament? Now that Jesus has been revealed, it's different. You cannot go and marry polygamy and say, oh, in the Old Testament, you know, David had so many wives. And, you know, even, even when Nathan the prophet came to rebuke David about adultery when he, when he killed Uriah, you know, he said, oh, I blessed you with so many, you know, I blessed you with so many wives and so many things. I made you a king, you know, and then they will say, oh, so you see, God was actually approving of him having so many wives because it was actually being counted like as one of the blessings to say but why would you go and get from someone who only has one you know but there is a difference that is the old testament there was so much ignorance because the son of god had not been revealed but now we are in the new testament so many things that were permissible in the old testament they are not permissible in the new and people go to uh, like to quote, you know, and the the Old Testament and say, look, when when God was talking uh, was talking to Israel, He said, I, I beautified you with jewelry, you know, I picked you up and I washed you, I beautified you with jewelry, I made you wear bracelets. I, firstly, you need to understand that Israel Israel is not a human. So when God was saying jewelry, it was significant of something. The same way that, uh, uh, like. The story of Rebecca, the story of Esther, it's signifying the beautification that the bride of Christ is undergoing right now. And that beautification is separation from the world to have a clear difference between someone of the world and the bride of Christ. God wants a clear difference. All those things were symbolic. People in the Old Testament were getting drunk. In the New Testament, it says drunkards will go to hell. So there are so many things that were permissible in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the Spirit of God, the same way that Eliezer went to beautify uh, Rebecca for her bridegroom, the same way the Spirit of God now that the Son of God has been revealed, now that Jesus has been revealed as our bridegroom, the Holy Spirit, he searches out the bride of Christ and he beautifies her for her bridegroom, free from vanity, so that her heart may be only for her groom, free from all those things, so that her heart may belong to her groom. Jesus hates those things. And if you come in his presence, he's going to tell you so clearly. It's very important to Jesus. That's why he had to come and show me that very day when I said, oh, maybe Jesus is going to make an exception. That very day, Jesus came and took my spirit to hell and showed me that no, because he doesn't want people to perish. He doesn't want people to perish. The only people who are going to perish 
are those who are not seeking him in truth and spirit. But even if nobody preaches to you, even if nobody tells you, as soon as you begin to come close, because all those things of vanity, fake beauty, changing yourself from God's image to Satan's image, because you want to conform to what Satan calls beautiful, and you think what God has made is not beautiful, you think God needed your help because Satan has convinced you that, you know, God didn't create your eyes properly. They're supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to look like this. You know, God didn't create uh, your hair properly. It's supposed to look like this. You are changing yourself to Satan's image from God's image. You are sinning against the Lord. And Satan is taking so many people to hell because of vanity. Like when Jesus showed me I was going to go to hell because I was straightening my hair. You know, like if God created you with curly hair, then you want it straight. Because you think what God created is not good and that's so displeasing to the Lord. Just, just be, be whom God created you. Be whom God created you. Do not conform to the standards of the world or to what Satan expects of you because Satan pervades everything God created just because he hates God. And so he wants to pervert even man who is created in God's image just in order to defy the Lord, to say, look, you, thought, you said what you created was good, but look, it's not good enough. It's supposed to be like this. Changing your, your, your body for vanity, going for surgery. Not health surgery, but I'm talking about going for surgery to beautify yourself, to, to start to look like what you want to look. It's different with the health surgery, like if somebody has an abnormality and that needs to be corrected, that's different. But just when you say, oh, my eyes are supposed to look like this, or oh, my nose is supposed to look like this, you are sinning against the Lord. And you know, this is very important to the Lord. It's very important to Jesus that I address these things, that I talk about these things. And the Holy Spirit bears witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness to all those people whom he wants to reach. There are so many people whom I know, even whom the Holy Spirit told the same thing, like, don't Stop doing it. When you start coming close to him, he will show you, you are so vain. You are still an idolater. And so many people say, oh, no, for me, I don't, I don't really have to get rid of makeup and jewelry, uh, you know, because it's not an idol to me. Why is it so hard for you to let go of if it's not an idol? Just the, that very resistance. And I have been there. I know how hard it is to let go of those things because you are so used to them. But Jesus wants you to be fully his. And those things are not pleasing to him. We are not in the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament. He wants a pure bride and supported by the world. He doesn't want a bride who is chasing after, oh, what is the, latest, the latest fashion now? Oh, what is the latest fashion now? You know, your heart is not with your groom. He doesn't want that kind of bride. She's not the one he's coming for. Jesus wants a bride who is unsupported by the world, whose eyes are only for him, whose ears are only for him, listening to what the Spirit of God tells her, seeking, seeking her Lord, not still entangled in all these worldly things. And when we talk about these things, when we talk about outward holiness and fake beauty, you know, we're dealing with demonic we are dealing with marine spirits the spirit of jezebel we're dealing with marine spirits because they are all under the marine kingdom you know controlled by the queen of the coast who is a, mar a marine demon and she is the demon that is in charge of fornication that is why even in the in the time of noah when the fallen angels introduced all these things even in the book of Enoch, you know, some people don't believe like, oh, the book of Enoch, you know, they want to dismiss it and say, oh, where is it in the Bible? But the book of Enoch is actually quoted in the Bible. But when they introduced all these things, then the, what followed 
immorality. And it's the same in this age. That's why even the Bible says, as it was in the time of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Why has Satan introduced all these things to increase the spirit of immorality? And the hearts of many have grown cold because their hearts are so caught up in all these things of the world. But to be the bride of Christ, you have to be holy in every area. Jesus hates vanity. He hates all that fake beauty. Changing yourself to Satan's image. He hates it. But it has to be accompanied with inner holiness as well. It doesn't have to be for a pretense only. While your heart is full of sin. But Jesus' bride is the one who is complete. Who is holy in everything. Inside and outside. So it's time for us to seek the Lord. And to beautify ourselves for the Lord Jesus. And to prepare to meet our bridegroom. The same way that Esther prepared. But this time around... It's about our lives. It's about getting rid of anything that pulls us away from Him. And it's about conforming to Him and being different from the world, being separate from the world, and loving the Lord with all our hearts. We have to love our bridegroom, not this world, because the Bible says, Love not the world, nor the things of the world.